this part of the uh, experiments uh, is concerned with the bioinorganic chemistry and uh, it, it takes up to four hours laboratory period uh, uh, and it goes under the category of characterizing uh, metal ion complexes in solution. Now all the ligands uh, in the biological system uh, attach to transition metals. For example, the amino acids, 24 amino acids, the side chain attach itself as a ligand uh, to the uh, metal ions, nickel, copper, iron. As we can see, the glycine amino acid on top, the drawing, uh, it has the N uh, side which attaches to the metal and the O side and the metal ion can take up to three glyc glycinates. Uh, when the glycine HA uh, dissociates to A minus and H plus, it binds the uh, metal ion. Other ligands in the metalloproteins. Metalloproteins are called uh, enzymes in the biological system and other biological ligands for example coordinate to the metal ion for example the uh, 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 nucleotides, uh, proteins, uh, all these are biological uh, inorganic complexes uh, and uh, we are going to characterize the complexes in solution and uh, find the ratio and the stability constant of the nickel with the glycine as an example of biological uh, complexes with metal ions. For example here we have the protein and in the middle of the protein at, at the bottom the metal ion uh, attached by the side chains of amino acids. Although the, uh, co the coordination compounds, uh, they form variety of geometries in general, the first row transition elements in the plus two oxidation states, uh, they form these ions, they react with water the minute you place the salt in water to form MH2O6 2+. In addition, uh, if you add L- uh, another ligand to the uh, equated metal ion, uh, the L- competes with H2O uh, for the coordination sphere of the metal ion to form MH2O5 L+. Plus then uh, another uh, ligand comes on uh, to replace another H2O and so on. Each step is considered an equilibrium as shown. MH2O6 2 plus plus L minus gives MH2O5 L plus complex plus H2O. These labile complexes of nickel 2 plus, cobalt 2 plus, copper 2 plus and zinc 2 plus undergo this equilibrium and uh, K equals the concentration of the complex MH2O5 L plus times H2O divided by the concentration of equated ion MH2O6 2 plus uh, times the concentration of the ligand L minus. Concentration of the complex uh, and other species depend on the nature of the ligand and the competition with H2O uh, but in dilute solutions H2O is considered constant uh, because uh, it's in available in very high uh, quantities and it goes in the equilibrium constant. So uh, after the assumption that H2O concentration is constant, the equilibrium constant uh, K1 uh, includes inside it the concentration of H2O. So we can write the uh, equilibrium constant without the H2O equals the concentration of the complex MH2O5 L plus divided by the concentration of MH2O6 times the ligand and this is K1. Now, because H2O occupies all sites, uh, not occupied by the ligand L-, we can save uh, the time and the expression will be uh, without H2O. We can write M2+, plus 
as a brief of M uh, H2O 6 2 plus and uh, L minus uh, equals M L plus assuming all the other sites the other five sites are occupied by H2O now K1 becomes briefly equals the concentration of the complex M L plus concentration of the metal uh, 2 plus divided by L minus and uh, now the stability constant k1 uh, is uh, uh, or the formation constant k1 uh, means k1 represents the uh, stability of the complex ml1 or the formation constant for the complex ml1 and usually for uh, inorganic uh, coordination compounds it's 10 to the 20 10 to the 5 10 to the 10 very high uh, amount now uh, the uh, equilibrium uh, to be true you have to use as you know the activity uh, instead of the concentration because it's uh, more accurate and the activity equals the concentration of any substance times the mean activity coefficient gamma now k gamma equals the activity of the complex ml plus divided by ac the activity of the metal 2 plus times the activity of the ligand l minus uh, and this is equal the concentration of the species ML plus times gamma ML plus M2 plus times gamma M2 plus L minus times gamma uh, L minus now we are going to uh, uh, to try to make the uh, conditions in the experiment to uh, when you measure the concentrations to make it as close as possible to the activity so you can get the true activity uh, coefficient uh, and the true equilibrium constant k uh, gamma which is k1 uh, by uh, first using constant ionic strings second by diluting the solutions so these two conditions you have to bear in mind all the time dilute solutions 10 to the minus 3 molar 10 to the minus 2 molar and constant ionic strength by using a salt uh, uh, like NaNO3 uh, KNO3 and so on the uh, argument in this slide to justify using infinite dilution and constant ionic strength now to evaluate gamma uh, it's a difficult job but the activity coefficient as it's known from physical chemistry usually depend on the ionic strength of the solution at infinite dilution so at infinite dilution and constant ionic strength uh, gamma is approximated to one gamma equals one which means the activity down there in the red color activity of substance a equals the concentration times gamma and when gamma at uh, infinite dilution 10 to the minus 3 molar for example and constant ionic strength 0.1 molar KNO3 gamma becomes 1 so the activity becomes closer to the concentration and what we are measuring becomes uh, very close to the true uh, values and it will give give us the true equilibrium constant now we uh, the uh, ionic strength uh, of the solution uh, desirable to maintain a known and constant ionic strength the solution under study particularly in reactions involving uh, charged ligands like l minus the value of the equilibrium constant will change with uh, variation of ionic strength that's why if you see in listed in the books the equilibrium constant uh, of complexes or formation constants always listed with certain ionic strength because it changes with changing the ionic strength 0.1 molar KNO3 0.2 molar KNO3 and so on because the uh, ionic strength uh, is related to the sum of the squares of electrical charges in solution per unit volume as we are going to see in the next slide in most equilibrium studies of metal complexes and their formation the equilibrium constant k 
can be evaluated from measurements uh, on solutions containing various concentrations of metal, iron, and ligand. Such concentrations will produce various ionic strengths. So the ionic strengths will change uh, according to complex formation in the uh, gamma values and therefore k gamma which is the uh, true equilibrium constant uh, to keep the ionic strength constant the large excess of unreactive ionic salt like KNO3 is added to the solution then any changes in the ionic strength owing to the changes uh, because of complexation as you can see you see in the equilibrium down there m2 plus plus l minus uh, gives ml plus uh, will be negligible compared to the high concentration of the added salt the salt uh, we add uh, to maintain the str uh, the ionic strength constant uh, the, it does not interact with the metal ion or the ligand. These salts, uh, like KNO3, NaClO4, uh, because NO3 minus does not interact with the ligand, and uh, ClO4 does not interact with the ligand. So ClO4 minus does not interact with the metal ion. And uh, in this experiment, uh, as you, uh, we said several times, KNO3 is added in high concentration, 0.2 molar. Large excess of KNO3 ensures that the ionic strength stays constant throughout the experiment. Uh, and the gamma values for M2 plus L minus and ML plus will still be unknown because they will be evaluated later on the ratio of gamma ml plus to gamma m2 plus uh, times l minus this ratio in equation 3 uh, will be an unknown constant the value of k will therefore be calculated using only the concentrations uh, of the complex the metal ion and the ligand uh, as in uh, equation 2 such uh, as K, the evaluated K is called concentration constant at certain ion strengths. That's why in the literature values, as I said before, the tabulation of uh, equilibrium constants, K or formation constants, always mention the ionic strength. Uh, and most of the times it's 0.1 molar KNO3. Now the existence of coordination sites in many metal complexes means that L- and H2O compete for all the six coordination sites and the following equilibria uh, will take place in solution. The first equilibrium will be M2 plus plus L- minus K1 uh, will give ML uh, plus. Then ML plus Assuming monodentate ligand, you have six steps, six ligands. ML plus plus L minus uh, K2 gives ML2. And uh, ML2 uh, will react with L minus to give ML3 minus. Uh, and uh, K3 can be evaluated. Now, because we have uh, uh, bidentate ligand, so the six sites will uh, will be obtain, uh, will be occupied by three ligands. Each ligand will provide two uh, sites, oxygen, nitrogen. So we we stop at ML3 and we evaluate K1, K2, K3 uh, in this experiment. Now the experiment is done by measuring the concentrations uh, and the pH variations. Uh, it's worth noting that this plot, for example, here, the change in complex concentration uh, with pH. For example, we start at pH 3 and uh, we start adding uh, glycinate. Uh, the pH will uh, go up and up. At lower pH, the 1 to 1 complex ML+, plus, the, when the pH goes higher, it forms the ML2 and uh, between pH 6 and 9, ML3 uh, will start forming, ML3 minus. Uh, and uh, after the pH measurements, we can uh, evaluate the constants K1, K2, and K3. 
complexes such as ML2 and ML3 minus uh, represent the ML2 uh, 4OH and ML3 uh, 3OH all minus uh, can exist as uh, transform or cis form as can you see in the margin now the uh, equilibrium cannot distinguish the isomeric forms it measures the total concentration of ml2 and the total concentration of ml3 and the equilibrium constants k1 k2 up to k6 if we have uh, monodentate ligand a series of equilibria and this is called stepwise stability constant k1 is for step one k2 for step two k3 for step three now we have an overall uh, formation constant or stability constant called beta beta one equals k1 beta two equals k1 times k2 and beta three equals k1 times k2 times k3 this is the overall stability of the 3 1 uh, complex the overall stability of the 2 to 1 complex beta 2 the uh, overall stability of complex 1 to 1 is beta 1 in this experiment we are going to study the chelation of glycine amino acid uh, nh2 ch2 coo minus uh, which is a bidentate ligand so the metal ion nickel 2 plus is going to take three glycinate to fill the six coordination sites now in this picture you can see the a minus which is the glycinate uh, ligand bound to m2 plus and the other uh, four coordination sites are filled with uh, h2o so uh, ma plus means uh, metal uh, iron nickel 2 plus bound to one uh, glycinate as you can see in this picture the following equilibria uh, measures the interaction between uh, glycinate a minus with uh, nickel 2 plus in aqueous solution the first equilibrium is ni2 plus plus a minus gives NIA plus the one-to-one -one complex and uh, K1 equals NIA plus over nickel free nickel uh, times A minus the second equilibrium constant NIA plus uh, takes another A minus to form NIA2 two-to-one complex and the equilibrium constant is K2 equals the concentration of the two to one complex NIA2 over NIA plus times A minus. The third equilibrium is NIA2 takes A minus and forms NIA3 minus. Uh, and the equilibrium constant is the concentration of NIA3 minus divided by NIA2 times A minus. Now because of the charge on the complex, uh, always uh, it's a trend that k1 is larger than k2 larger than uh, k3 uh, because of the charge on the complex repels uh, the third uh, uh, ligand and k becomes smaller so k1 always uh, larger than k2 larger than k3 uh, the determination of k whether K acid or uh, K equilibrium for complex formation uh, used to be determined uh, in different ways, spectrophotometric ways, other ways to measure the concentrations. Now, the uh, pH measurement is a very efficient way to measure the concentrations in solution. Uh, the pH measurements you measure the H plus, and from the H plus concentration, you take it. Uh, as a guide to uh, to know the concentration of the other species in solution the, uh, we used to do this experiment the first step was to uh, calculate the uh, acid constant of the glycine HA here uh, the deprotonation of the NH3 plus uh, to give H plus and glycinate which is A minus so this is an acid dissociation uh, HA goes to H plus plus A minus and the uh, acid dissociation constant Ke we used to titrate the glycine and find the equilibrium constant for the uh, glycinate but in this uh, uh, new uh, experiment 
experimental procedure uh, ka is given so you don't have to uh, to do the, the this part of the experiment and calculate ka now the, equi the equilibrium lies far to the left but addition of nickel 2 plus positively charged to the solution result in the release of H plus as if the nickel 2 plus replaces the proton on the glycinate uh, depending on the affinity of the positively charged nickel for the chelating ligand. So the total uh, equilibrium uh, should be nickel 2 plus plus HA uh, to give H plus plus N A N I A plus, that means the nickel deprotonates the glycine and forms the N I A plus and gives a protein in solution, and we call this K E or K equilibrium. Before we used to uh, calculate uh, titrate glycine and find K A and K E. Now uh, K A of glycine is given to you in this experiment. Now, from the uh, knowledge of the initial concentrations on the right, you see in the blue writing, the known concentration of uh, nickel, which we dissolve in solution, and the known concentration of glycine HA, and the measured pH at each point, we can uh, uh, prove that K1 equals Ke over Ka from the previous equations. So if you measure the pH, you can calculate K1 from Ke over Ka. But uh, we have different K values, K1, K2, K3, which makes it more complicated, and we cannot go through this route uh, this route to calculate the equilibrium constant it becomes more complicated as we can see later on so we have to do the uh, pH titration and calculate the uh, proton concentration at different pH values uh, uh, to calculate K1, K2 and K3 as we, ca uh, as we will see later on now, how do we uh, calculate the uh, mean activity uh, coefficient uh, from the equation minus log gamma plus minus uh, equals 0.5 times Z1 times Z2 times mu to the half, which is the ionic strength, divided by 1 plus mu to the half minus 0.1 mu. In this expression, Z1 and Z2 are the plus and minus 1, uh, for H plus and NO3 minus respectively, the ionic strength mu equals half the total concentration, uh, summation of the total concentrations of ions you, we used uh, for ionic strength, which is KNO3. K plus uh, times the concentration, uh, uh, 1 squared, which is 1, uh, minus 1 squared, which is uh, 1, and uh, times the concentration, which is 0.2 molar, and it will give you the ionic strength. From this equation, mu uh, will be plugged in equation 8 above, and you can find the uh, mean activity uh, coefficient. Now, by definition, the activity of the protons, H+, plus, which is more accurate than the concentration of H+, plus, equals the activity coefficient, the mean activity coefficient gamma plus minus which we calculated earlier on times the, con the concentration of H plus now we measure the pH and the pH uh, as we uh, know uh, equals minus log not the concentration minus log the activity of the protons and so the log uh, and we know that the activity equals the concentration times the mean activity coefficient. So log H plus equals minus pH minus log the activity coefficient or the mean activity coefficient. This will give you the concentration of H plus from each uh, pH measurement by using equation 9. Now the hydroxide ion concentration also be uh, calculated from pH measurements knowing that Kw equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees centigrade. So you have to maintain uh, the temperature 
uh, at 25 degrees centigrade and 0.1 molar ionic strength which is the uh, KNO3 now log OH minus equals pH minus pKW plus log the mean activity coefficient uh, log uh, gamma plus minus hence it's possible to evaluate the H plus and the OH minus uh, in solution for the titration uh, at each point Returning to the uh, problem of evaluating Ka for the glycine, suppose the solution glycine 0.1 molar KNO3 titrated with sodium hydroxide. After each addition of sodium hydroxide, the pH will change, right? Then the concentration of uh, the positive charges equals the concentration of the negative charges, which we call the charge balance in solution 0.1. Uh, that means all positive charges concentration H plus uh, Na plus equals uh, all negative charges concentration, which is the OH minus plus A minus. We call this the charge balance. Then the material balance, point number two, which is the total glycine we dissolved uh, in solution, A total. This is the total glycine we dissolved equals HA, uh, which is protonated glycine, and A minus. So the glycine. Uh, total glycine will be in solution in two forms HA plus A minus this is what we call the uh, material balance so we have charge balance and material balance now the expression for the acid dissociation constant in equation 7 we uh, saw earlier on which is Ka equals concentration of A minus uh, times concentration of H plus divided by concentration of HA now we can find the pKa which is minus log Ka equals minus log H plus plus log and we uh, substitute for uh, H uh, for H plus and A minus so a total minus all the positive charges and negative charges a total minus na plus h plus oh divided by na plus h plus minus oh minus will give you the pka value we used to do this experiment and calculate ka and pka for the glycine now uh, it's uh, you don't have to do this experiment uh, ka value is given to you and the pka value of glycine is 9.6 now it's given to you here and Ka 2.5 times 10 to the minus 10 now uh, you can use this value in the calculation of uh, the uh, equilibrium constant of glycine with nickel we turn now to determination of K1 and K2 for the reaction of nickel 2 plus with A minus which is glycinate uh, you have to pay uh, good attention that we are reacting nickel 2 plus with glycinate A minus or sodium glycinate uh, which we are going to prepare now the solution containing 1 millimole of nickel 2 plus as NiCl2 6H2O and 1 mole H plus as HNO3 will be titrated with solution of sodium glycinate which is uh, a minus uh, NH2 CH2 COO minus NA plus uh, you prepare by neutralizing the glycine with equivalent moles of sodium hydroxide which you are going uh, to prepare before the titration now uh, the equilibrium mixture will contain protons H plus uh, hydroxide ions OH minus Na plus uh, glycine protonated HA uh, deprotonated glycine A minus depending on the pH at low pH uh, the glycine will be mostly HA at high pH the glycine will become A minus and uh, the complex 1 to 1 at low pH higher pH becomes 2 to 1 higher pH at 9 for example pH 9 becomes 3 to 1 and so on so the concentrations are varying continuously with pH that's why we use constant ionic strength and the nickel total nickel we dissolve by calculating the number of moles of nickel needed and we weigh nickel chloride and we dissolve in solution now uh, the uh, titration will give us uh, the pH values uh, for example you add 0.1 mil 
sodium glycinate from the burette and uh, uh, you to the nickel uh, in the beaker and you measure the pH then you add another 0.1 mil and you measure the pH and so on until you get to pH 9 and you see the changes in color of course because the complexes are forming uh, 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1 at different pH values now we cannot decide when where do we have the one to one or two to one or three to one that's why we have the uh, n bar here which is the average binding the total number of a minuses uh, bound to nickel so n bar uh, equals moles bound a minus divided by total moles of nickel two plus this can be translated into complexes the total bound a minus is in the form of one to one complex NAI plus plus. Now, uh, NIA2 contains two A's, so we multiply the concentration of NIA2 by 2 to give the total A's. Now, uh, NIA3 minus contains three A's, so it divide, um, it, it's multiplied by 3. So the total number of moles of A minus bound to nickel equals 1 times NIA plus plus 2 times NIA2 plus 3 times NIA3 minus divided by the total number of moles of nickel now nickel is present in free nickel uh, at equilibrium NI2 plus NIA plus uh, one to one because n plus nia2 plus nia3 minus this is the average binding it's called the average binding you take the total number of uh, glycinates uh, divided by the total number of nickels uh, and it gives you the average binding n bar so from the equations uh, of the equilibrium k1 k2 and k3 we can substitute for k1 we can substitute for uh, NIA plus uh, by K1 uh, times A minus. If you go back to the reactions uh, of equilibria, which is K1 equals NIA plus times uh, divided by A minus times nickel and uh, substitute for NIA plus you get uh, K1 uh, times A minus. The same for NIA2, uh, it's equal K1, K2 uh, uh, times A minus squared. Uh, NIA3 equals K1, K2, K3 times A minus uh, to the power 3. Now, uh, the, the nickel uh, equals 1 plus K1 times A1, uh, K2, K1, times a1 squared k1 k2 k3 times a1 uh, a minus uh, to the power 3 if you notice now n bar which is the uh, average binding n bar the average binding uh, is uh, in uh, expressed in the form of k's and glycinate only in equation 12 so equation 12 uh, is uh, substitution of the concentrations of complex and nickel from the equations of equilibria we explained later uh, previously now uh, this becomes easier we have n bar in the form of k's and a minuses now uh, from the experimental uh, point n bar can be expressed in terms of total glycine which is the glycine you uh, used, A total, uh, concentration of HA and A minus. Total glycine in solution is in two forms, either protonated glycine HA or deprotonated glycine A minus, divided by the total metal, which is M total. This is equation 13. Now, uh, uh, we have to determine the uh, HA and A minus bec uh, because both give us the total glycine or they equal the total glycine now the H plus in solution uh, we add HNO3 as you know 
bound H plus equals HA total HA in solution and this equals added H plus in the form of HNO3 plus H plus from H2O which is uh, K, from KW and uh, minus free pH free H plus free H plus is from the pH so the equation becomes HA equals CH which is the added uh, uh, acid HNO3 plus OH minus which is from water and uh, dissociation of water from KW and minus H plus which you calculate from the pH now you have HA where CH is the concentration of H plus uh, in the Ni2 solution due to added HNO3 now you substitute from equation uh, 7 which is an equilibrium A minus equals Ka divided by H plus CH plus OH minus minus H plus and uh, from this you can get A minus now you substitute uh, uh, equation 14 and 15 into 13 the previous one you you'll get n bar equals a total minus 1 plus ka over h plus times ch plus oh minus minus h plus over m total thus a minus and n bar may be calculated from experimentally known quantities that's what we want to get to you titrate and from the h plus you measure and the concentrations you used you can calculate n bar and a minus in solution if you do that you can get to the final point which is plotting n bar versus log a minus now from the uh, titrations uh, we calculate the uh, average binding n bar and a minus uh, then uh, at each titration point you calculated n bar and uh, a minus uh, you make a table of log a minus versus n bar then you plot n bar versus log a minus uh, so this plot will give you k1 k2 and k3 uh, we're going to prove that uh, K1 equals uh, 1 over A minus at half the titration point uh, between uh, 0 and uh, uh, first complex. So if we go back to the uh, equilibrium on the right here, uh, K1 equals 1 over A minus at half titration uh, point, K2 equals 1 over A minus at 1 and a half, K3 equals 1 over A minus at 2 and a half. How, how does this happen? Now from the first equilibrium, if we have uh, A minus uh, and Ni2 plus equals Ni A minus. Now at half equilibrium, Ni A plus the concentration of the complex will be equal to the nickel concentration so the nickel equals ni a minus if we go back to k1 at half equilibrium uh, uh, ni a plus equals ni2 plus uh, will cancel with each other and k1 at half equilibrium will be 1 over a minus so uh, we go back to the plot and at uh, n uh, bar the average binding equals half uh, we uh, make uh, an arrow to the uh, curve and uh, we find log a minus from log a minus we find a minus and k1 will be 1 over a minus now k2 the same in the same manner at uh, one and a half equilibrium uh, in ia 2 equals uh, NIA and they cancel with each other and K2 equals 1 over A minus at 1 and a half equilibrium so at N bar 1 and a half uh, we take the uh, value uh, 1 and a half and uh, on the straight line uh, we find log a minus and one uh, at one and a half it will give you log a minus then uh, the anti log you find a minus and k2 equals one over a minus k3 at two and a half 
concentration uh, will give you log a minus then you find a minus then 1 over a minus will give you uh, k3 values at uh, two and a half uh, this proved by at half equilibrium step each half equilibrium step uh, will give you uh, the k value uh, 1 over a minus now the experimental part uh, first you have to prepare uh, the uh, solutions and you uh, set up the pH meter uh, first you have to prepare the uh, solutions listed here uh, uh, you don't have to prepare 20 mil 0.4 molar glycine because you're gonna prepare glycinate so uh, to prepare the sodium glycinate you prepare uh, 8 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 mole glycine uh, you, uh, uh, times the molecular weight solid glycine you see on the right you put it in the beaker uh, 8 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 mole times the molecular weight of glycine then you prepare 500 mil 0.2 molar KNO3 100 mil 0.1 molar HNO3 and 100 mil 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide and you standardize it and you use it to standardize the HNO3 then you continue to preparing the glycinate now we have 8.3 times 10 uh, 8 times 10 to the uh, times 10 to the minus 3 mole uh, glycine times the molecular weight for example 24.24 uh, uh, gram glycine you add to it uh, 16 mil uh, sodium hydroxide assuming it's 0.5 molar if uh, it's 0.5 molar 16 mil then you continue to uh, another 4 mil distilled water so you will end up with 0.4 molar glycinate uh, then you proceed to the uh, titration uh, of the uh, complex uh, by using the uh, pH meter. Titration uh, as follows. The first step is you uh, set up the pH meter. Now uh, the pH meter, you get the buffer solutions, pH 7, you measure the pH, uh, clean the uh, electrode, and you have to be careful with the electrode as you know this is very sensitive glass and you dry it with it uh, very sensitively with a filter paper you touch it with a filter paper and you dip it in the buffer solution it should measure seven and if it doesn't measure seven you adjust it to seven and this is at 25 degrees you have a thermocouple you should dip the thermocouple in the buffer as well because and you make sure the temperature is 25 if it's not 25 uh, you have to put in a thermostat with 25 degrees centigrade now uh, after you measure the ph uh, to seven you go to another buffer which is buffer 10 to make uh, sure that the linearity and it should read 10 uh, then you go to pH 4 buffer 4 and it should read 4 if it doesn't read 4 you have to adjust it if it doesn't adjust you use the equation to calibrate your pH meter and the uh, technician will help you calibrate your pH meter now uh, it should be very uh, accurate now the first part used to be the determination of ka for glycine it's given to you in the text so you don't have to do the first part only you do the second part which is uh, the uh, complex ion titration uh, the complex ion titration you set up the ph meter on a stand and you put a beaker and in this beaker uh, first you put the uh, 10 mil 0.1 molar HNO3, 100 mil 0.2 molar KNO3, and you measure uh, exactly and uh, 0.24 uh, gram uh, nickel chloride hexahydrate, and you add 90 mil H2O exactly using uh, analytical equipment. Now you dip the electrode plus the thermocouple and you see check the temperature if it's not 25 you have to put uh, around the beaker uh, uh, 
uh, water with 25 degrees centigrade or you adjust the, the uh, setup to uh, lab temperature and in the burette you have to be careful in the burette the blue up there you fill with the prepared sodium glycinate you have prepared which is adding uh, sodium hydroxide to glycine one to one and uh, you measure the ph before you start the titration now uh, the first uh, now you have the table down there you have the table here and uh, uh, at zero volume uh, the pH for example 3 then you add 0.1 mil or 0.2 mil you stir with a magnetic stirrer here uh, in the uh, beaker and uh, you measure the pH for example 3.1 you add another 0.2 mil you measure the pH and you keep adding until you get to pH 10 uh, 0.2 mil 0.2 mil and you uh, record the pH uh, for every uh, step now from these pH values and from the sodium hydroxide values and the Ka values given you can uh, find uh, N bar and A minus at each step and from these you can plot the previous plot I showed you N, N bar versus A minus and from the plot you can find uh, the values of K1, K2, K3. Th this is uh, exactly what we want from this experiment. We don't uh, proceed any further. And from K1, K2, K3, uh, you can calculate beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 from the values. Now, uh, the uh, report should include the plot of n bar versus log a minus and the values of k1 k2 k3 and you draw the structures of the complexes and uh, uh, the accurate values of k1 k2 k3 at 0.1 molar kno3 uh, and you comment on the relative precision of k1 k2 k k3 now uh, it's required uh, to, uh, to solve the following problem draw the isomers of nickel glycinate uh, derive equation 11 and uh, you solve problem 3 and you write down the experimental procedure so we can check the experimental procedure uh, uh, when uh, you send it to me uh, you solve uh, problem 5 uh, and problem 6 as well please send me the solutions Thank you, and this will conclude the nickel glycinate uh, experiment.